So I'm just looking at this issue. So with um, anatomical terminology, obviously the first thing that you have to understand for each and every chapter that you'll be doing, you must ask yourself, why am I, um, why are they teaching us that specific chapter? So for you to be taught anatomical terminology, it's simply for one reason, for you to understand the, your lecturers and for you to understand your colleagues. But besides that, for you to be specific, if you're referring a patient to another, um, let's say hospital, for example. So when you refer that patient to another hospital, you must give them detail, details um, that are very specific. If you say that the patient has um, pain in the stomach and you couldn't maybe diagnose what was wrong with the patient, you should say specifically where in the stomach because the stomach can be above the navel, below, on the sides and everywhere. So to reduce the workload for the next person, you have to be specific. But the, the patient said that um, she has pain maybe two, um, two centimeters above the navel or um, um, maybe just inferior to the sternum or something like that. So that when the person goes there, they know exactly what they're looking for. And on top of that, another reason is that when you're going to be doing your dissection, you'll be given a manual, right? I hope they told you. You'll be given a manual that will guide you like what to do. They won't show you. From Monday, if you'll be dissecting from Monday, everything you'll be doing will be, you are doing it on your own. They won't be showing you anything. They're giving you the manual. The manual is telling you step by step what to do. So if the manual tells you um, dissect um, the mid surgical plane of this, um, what, 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 and make sure that um, you look at the transverse plane and everything, and you don't understand any of those things, then it will be difficult. You won't understand anything. Everything that you'll be doing there will be useless. And I would advise you that in um, in cases of um, dissection that you are hands-on, ensure that you're hands-on. Don't look, don't let your group members do all the working and you sit there and relax because everything you'll be doing there will come back to you at the end of the day. You'll be, um, it's easier for you to recall things that you were doing yourself. So if they say cut, don't be scared, do the cutting. If they say do this, do that. And always make sure that when you go to each and every dissection, you are prepared because you'll always have questions afterward. But besides the questions, it helps you because the diagrams that are, the structures that are there, in reality, they are not the same as the ones you see in your test book because everything in your test book is clear, it's colored, it's not, everything is just there. But when you get in reality, it's, it might not be in the same position where you expected it to be, right? So now you understand why you have to know anatomical terminology. So the question then is, what is this anatomical terminology? What do we have? Um, I'll tell you, to be honest with you, we have so many terms under anatomical terminology, but they all come with practice. They all come with repetition. They all come with active recall, right? I don't believe in writing notes, but if it helps you do that, but don't spend much more time um, writing notes because that will be wasting your time, right? You have a lot of workload this year, so try to reduce it by um, practicing um, using active recall. So that is why I'll be giving you surprise tips so that I force you and I force your brains to think. So the first ones that we'll be doing, we know that, um, let's say we have a human day. We are still together. Ms. Yes. Okay. So this is our our human. And then before we can even go there, we have something that we call anatomical position. Okay, guys, I want to write down everything yeah? because of time and everything, but I want you to listen. And if you didn't understand, you can stop me. You don't have to stop me at the end of the session. So we have something called anatomical position. So you must understand what is anatomical position. When we say something is in anatomical position, we are basically saying that these four basic things must be there. The body must be upright or it must be, it must be erect or it must be upright. It must be in an upright position or it must be erect. What we are meaning is that the person must be standing straight, not sitting down and not doing or laying down or any of that. So meaning that every terminology that you're going to learn, 
you apply it to the anatomical position throughout the year. So the first thing about the anatomical position is that the body has to be upright, right? I'll just write that down. It has to be upright or erect. I'll just say erect position. And then the second thing is that the arms have to be on the sides. Another thing is that the palms, while the, the arms are on the sides, the palms need to face forward. And obviously, if the palms are facing forward, are facing forward, the your thumbs will be facing sideways. So that one, that one is on some of the chest books, and it's not on others. And another thing with me, guys, I don't use chest books, I don't use slides. So everything I'm giving you is from my head. So it's it's um your duty at the end of the day to go back, or if your lecturer mentioned something that I didn't mention, or you didn't um, hear me mentioning for some reason, you can come back and ask me. Or if you are studying and I didn't mention something, come back and ask me because I'm not using the test book. I'm just using my head, right? So we said it has to be erect. It, the arms have to be on the sides and the palms have to be facing forward. And your, your feet have to be together. So when you have um, other test books can add and uh, mention the eyes that the eyes have to be um, in front, the nose and everything. All of those things are necessary because if the person is standing straight and the palms are facing forward, obviously everything will be facing forward. So the major, major four things, it's a direct position, the arms on the sides, the palms facing forward and the feet together. Are we clear? Do you understand? Can you repeat what you just said? Um, I just said that the anatomical position is everything that I wrote there. So when they say to you, um, explain what the anatomical position is, you tell them that the anatomical position is when the patient is standing upright or is in an upright position, the arms are on the sides, the palms are facing forward and the feet are together. That is what we call anatomical position. And every okay. terminology that I'm going to tell you, you apply to anatomical position. Everything that you're going to learn, when you're using your cadaver, when they say, um, maybe cut the right hand, you don't, it, the right hand doesn't depend on um, your position relative to the cadaver, if I'm making sense. So let's say, for example, right now, on, um, in this case, your right hand, as, okay, in my case, I'm facing um, my laptop screen. This is my right, and this is my left. So when you are using your um, right and left and whatever, you don't apply the terms to the observer. In this case, I am the observer. You don't apply the terms to the observer. You apply them to what you are given. So this is the right. This is the left. Not according to my um, view as an observer, but I put myself in that position, right? Because we call this anatomical position. I hope I'm making sense. So if they say okay. cut the right hand, you won't cut this hand because you are standing facing the person and this is your right. No, you don't take the position and are uh, related to um, the observer. Do, do you get me? Am I making sense? Okay, can, can I ask you a question? Yes. Let's say the body is laying down on the bed, right? Yes. And they said that we have to actually um, dissect the hand, the right hand. So we have to put ourselves in the position of when the person lies on the bed, which side or which hand is their right hand, right? Yes. Okay, now I get you. Yeah. So you always do that. The position, not the position, the direction that you're using, the directional terms, you apply them to the patient you're giving, not you. So we will do all this um, anatomical um, terminology and everything. But the first thing that I wanted you to understand is to understand the anatomical terminology. 
And I don't know if they told you, but this is important that um, in anatomy, anatomy has subdivisions. Um, we have, it's divided into microscopic, um, the macroscopic, the embryology, the surface anatomy, the regional and the systematic. Did they tell you that? Okay, they haven't yet told us that, but I heard about it from another student that there are various subdivisions of it. Yeah, that is um, important. Okay, so let me just sum it up with you because that is... Um, so we are saying that anatomy... Uh, this term, um, please, can we repeat that uh, positioning thing again? So basically, when you're dissecting, you have to... You have to uh, do it according to the anat anatomical positioning like of the patient, not the observer, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Thanks. The way I, I used to think of it, just remember that it's not about you. You are the doctor, so the focus is not on you, it's on the patient. I'm just trying to give you the subdivisions of um, anatomy so that you write them down. And then I'll explain um, simply what um, is expected from each. So you can see Everything I just wrote there. Is it clear? Yes, it is. Okay. So anatomy, obviously, what you have to know that everything that ends with O me O lo G or something like that, it has to do with study. So anatomy is basically the study of the human structures, right? Then obviously, since you did physiology now, I told you that in physiology you'll be studying the mechanisms and the functions of those structures. Yeah. So anatomy and physiology go hand in hand. You can't say you are mastering physiology and you don't understand anatomy, right? But um, physiology goes deeper and they involve functions, chemicals, and all those, right? But in anatomy, we are just straight. And the mechanisms can change in physiology. In anatomy, um, a certain muscle, a certain muscle will always be that muscle. It, will, it won't change. If they say this is the anterior scalene, it will always be the anterior scalene muscle. It won't wake up tomorrow and be the posterior, no. And it will always be situated in the same place. That is what makes anatomy easy, right? Although most people think it's difficult, it's not difficult. It's challenging because it requires your time. So anatomy is divided into. Um, Subdivisions, those are that, the ones that I gave you now, the microscopic. In the microscopic, we focus on um, the objects or the structures that are not in, um, you can't see with the naked eye, right? So the microscopic is further divided into two. We look at the cells and we look at the tissues. The cells, we call that the um, cytology, that is the study of skin. And then with tissues, we call that histology, is the study of tissues. So the cytology and the uh, histology, all of that you'll be doing it in um, with uh, Dr. Akmat, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that. He, he, he'll be teaching you histology, right? So with histology, don't, don't complicate things. Don't, don't go too much on that textbook. Stick to the slides and use the, un, the assignments he'll be giving you and everything, then you'll be fine, right? Just histology, the key to master histology, just know the differences, focus on mastering the differences, you'll be okay. And then when it comes to macroscopic, if something is micro, it's minor, it's it's so invisible that you can't see it with your naked eye, it needs a microscope. Let me not say it's invisible, but it needs a microscope for you to view. It. And then if it's macroscopic, it means it is visible to the naked eye, you can see it with the Naked eye. So macroscopic, also called um, cross anatomy, right? Those are the structures that you can view with your naked eye. And then when it comes to embryology, embryology is simply the study of the embryos and their development, which we'll be doing on Tuesday, the basic embryology. So 
focus everything that they'll be telling you on Tuesday, on Tuesday, focus and try to do employment. If you don't do it today, maybe tomorrow. I'll try, if you can attend, I'll try to do a recurrent session, right? And then with surface anatomy, surface anatomy also, it's just focusing on, it's, it's more or less the same as macroscopic, but it's, it's more or less focusing on um, certain surfaces, like maybe we can say uh, we are focusing on the, the hand or so forth, but that is more of um, regional anatomy, right? So surface anatomy, some of the textbooks um, associated with um, macroscopy because it's more or less the same thing. And then regional is when we are looking at the specific region. Like maybe we are looking at the lower limb and we are only focusing on that leg or we are looking at the abdomen only, that is regional anatomy. So you see that your blocks are um, divided according to regions so that they simplify things and teach you one specific thing so that you master it and then they move to the next region. But with systematic, systematic it focuses on um, the structures that form one system. So let's say we are doing the, the neurovascular or let's say we are doing neurology, so we'll be doing neurology. Neurology has everything that has to do with the brain. So we don't involve the hands, we don't involve anything that has nothing to do with the brain. So that is systematic. So that is how we break down anatomy. And the purpose of breaking it down is so that you understand because it is very broad. So we try to break it down and then treat is in each section as it is, right? So I hope that um, summarizes everything that you have to know. Um, and then going back to the anatomical terminology. Now you know what is um, anatomical position. And then if the body is not standing up straight like this, and then the person is lying flat, right? Don't mind the drawings. What is important is the concept. So the person is lying um, on their back and then facing up. We call this the supine position. Are we clear? Supine, what is it? Supine. Oh, supine, okay. Yeah. So if most of the time, obviously, when you are going to the hospital, you'll find that patients are in their supine position. So they are lying on their back and facing upwards. When, when doctors are doing surgery, they put a patient in their supine position, right? And then everything that I'll be teaching you in anatomical terminology, you, you must always ask yourself the opposite, right? So if the person is not in their supine, if the person, like now we said the person is standing, right? And then from there, now we want to know if the person is not, if the person is standing, we said they are in the upright or erect position. If they are lying flat and then on their back and facing upwards, we are saying they are in the supine position. If they are still lying flat, but now instead of them facing up, they are now facing down, but they are still lying flat. We say they are in the prone position. Sorry for the handwriting. So the easiest way to remember this is that supine is lying on their spine. So supine spine, you won't forget. Don't try to cram in anatomy, just find something that will help you to remember. Understand, cramming won't help you in any way. So supine from spine, supine and spine. Right? They are more or less the same. So we won't forget. If they say supine, think of spine. So it means the person is lying on their spine and is facing upwards. And obviously, if you know supine, obviously it will be easier for you to remember the opposite because I told you that everything in anatomical terminology, if it's not up, it's down. If it's not left, it's right. If it's not down, it's up. If it's not the anterior, it's the posterior. Everything is just, if, if you can master one term, it will be easier for you to recall the other. Are we clear? So, um, prone is lying on your stomach. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then um, the one of um, divisions we'll, we'll do it um, when we are doing the skeletal system. But now, for now, I want to know, and obviously in what um, we've been taught from life science, that the body is divided into two main areas. 
you have the axial region and the appendicular region, right? That you know. Yes, I think so. yes. And we'll, we'll dwell more on that when we're going to the skeletal system. But for now, I want you to know that the axial system, you know that, um, not the axial system, the axial region consists of the head, the vertebral column, and the trunk. So in the axial um, region, we are focusing on the head, the vertebral column, and then the trunk only. And then your appendicular will be anything that will be coming from um, the trunk. That will be your pectoral kidney and your upper limbs. Pectoral kidney and upper limbs and your pelvic kidney and your lower limbs. For now- Sorry, Taban, can you please repeat what you said for the axial region? It consists of the head, the yeah. vertebral column and the trunk. Okay. But I'll repeat this when you're doing intro to skeletal system, which I'm hoping we do today. Okay. Um, vertebral column and the trunk and the head. So the reason why I'm telling you this is that some of the anatomical terminology will be, if you, um, they will be specific to the axial region, and some will only be focusing on the um, appendicular region, right? And some of the um, terminology can be applying, you can have two terminologies for one thing you'll see that, like the head. But I'll, I'll tell you the terms for now, let's move on. So now that you understand um, that the body is divided into regions and everything, let's say we are focusing on the abdomen, right? That is part of the axial region. You'll be having, um, so we, if you are referring to the abdomen, um, the um, anatomical terminology for abdomen is abdominal. So it's not that far from the weight abdomen itself. Right? And then when you're referring to the head, you call that cephalic. Anything that is referring to the head, it is cephalic. Are we clear? Okay. Anything referring to the neck is cervical. So this one, you'll also see it when you are doing um, the reproductive system. Um, when it comes to you doing the female, um... okay, guys, the meeting will automatically end in like 10 minutes. So I'll ask you to join again. Ne? Is it okay? Okay. Sure. Okay. And then the, I was saying the one of cervical, um, when in females, it's also referring to the neck of the cervix, right? So hence we are saying cervical. So you see it when you are doing head and neck, and then you also see it um, when you are doing the reproductive system to be specific, the one of females, right? When we are referring to the neck of the cervix. Okay, then, when, you say, when you say the neck, it's the cervical, right? Yes. When you refer to the neck, cervical. Yes. But in the female, it's also, it relates to what in the female as well, so that you hear you properly. For? For the female, you said that we can repeat that term, cervical, in the female reproductive system. Yes, when you are referring to the cervix. Okay. Because the cervix is that narrow, narrow part before you we go to, it's like the neck of the vagina and the uterus. Yeah. 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 So hence we are also using that term. So don't be surprised and ask yourself, how is the neck in the uterus and the vagina, what's happening? So it, it just refers to cervical simply means in, in a narrow part between two um, broad structures, just like the head and the and your trunk. So the narrow part in between is your neck. So we call that okay. the cervical region, right? Okay. Yes, and then another word we use for referring to the head is uh, cranial. So we said um, we are using cep um, cephalic, we are also using cranial. I already told you that one um, structure can have two terms. So cranial or cephalic is referring to the head. But the one of cranial, they mostly um, apply to the skull. Okay. Okay. And then referring to the face, it is facial. So I won't write that down. 
and then we have the groin area. Um, I don't need the picture to show you, but this is OI, guys, sorry. Do you know what is a groin area? Um, isn't you know it the... Yes? Isn't it the private part of a male's reproductive system? It's not really of the males, but it's that okay. space. Yeah, you, you, get, you have it correct, it's that space. So anatomically, that groin area, we call it the inguinal area. In, in, in uh, winner, yes. It's I N G U I N A L. Okay. Some of the terms might not make sense now, but throughout the year you'll understand them and they'll be easy. Okay. Okay. And then when something is between the scapula, the scapula is the um what has your what is supporting your shoulder, right? From the peg, it's this, it's shaped like this. From the back. Oh, okay, yeah. You see the bone I'm talking about, or I'll try to put pictures on 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 on, on the next um lesson. Okay. It's what the scapula? Yes, the name of the bone is the scapula, but we are not referring to the name of the bone. If we are referring to this area, if someone maybe you are itching and then you want someone to like give you a bit of a scratch on the back and then you want that person to give you um, the scratch uh, at, at the back between the two scapular bones. You simply tell that person to give you a scratch at the interscapular region. So we call it the interscapular because inter means between. So since it's between the scapula, we call it interscapular. Okay, because can I ask you a question? Because yes. you said interscapular region. In between both of the scapular bones, isn't that the vertebrae column moving downwards? Not really. This is more like of the surface anatomy because now we have a specific term for the um for the bone that is in between. You know that is the vertebral okay. column. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we won't call that, but the vertebral column is um within the interscapular region. If I can oh. yeah. Okay. That makes better sense. Deep, deep, deep. Okay. Yeah. And then if we are referring to the lower peg, um, before you get to your hips and but the lower peg, where towards the end of the vertebral column, we refer to that um, as the lumbar. We'll do mm. all of this when you're doing um, the skeletal system. And obviously, yeah. anatomically, we don't have what we call um, spinal column. That is the everyday language. The spinal <laughs> column in anatomy, we call that the vertebra column. Vertebra column. No, we yeah. don't see spinal column, we see vertebra column. And then, if this is your neck, the posterior of the neck, the posterior part of the neck, the back of your neck, we call that. The knuckle area. What is that? Nickel, can you spell it? Yeah, N U C H A L. Okay. N U C H A. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then anything referring to the chest, is that? Uh, what part is that referring to? The posterior, the posterior part, the back of your neck. The back of your neck. Yes. Okay. And then anything referring to the chest is we call that the pectoral region. So hence we call this the pectoral kidney. Now you understand why are we calling this chest? the pectoral kidney because it's attached to the chest. Okay, can you please just wait, please? The chest is the pectoral, right? Yes. And then you said anything attached. What do you mean? Ral. It's P E C T O R A L. Yes. Okay. So anything attached to the to the chest, it's called the pectoral region, or anything referring to the chest is the pectoral okay. region. But since okay. you you have this, the if you can um dislocate 
where your arm is attached to, like your shoulder. Okay. We call that um, the pectoral hidden. We You it see when we are doing the, the skeletal system. The reason why we are calling okay. it the pectoral kidney is because it's attached or it's closer to the chest. Oh. We said we call this here the pectoral kidney, right? So we call this here what? The pelvic kidney because it, it is closer to the pelvis. Okay, can I can I just simplify this? Like, just correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. Anything close to a specific region, we, we actually, like, when we want to name it, we use the region it's closest to, to name it. Yes, but that one okay. on its own, um, the question that is, like, the, the shoulder is closer to the chest, and at the same time, yeah. it's closer to the, up, the, the what do you call it? The arm, you know that the arm, we have the arm and the forearm. So the shoulder is not the arm, it's not the chest, it's in between. So we yeah. name it according to um, the chest. We choose the chest because that is where it originates. Everything oh. in culture and anatomy has the origin and it has the insertion. So it has where it originates, where it comes from and where it's going. So where it comes from, we call that the origin. So the origin of the arm, it's here. Okay, it's insertion. basically close. Yes. It's so, close to the chest. So the origin of the arm is close to the chest. So we're going to yeah. use the origin to name it. Not to name the arm, but the part where it's connected to. Okay. Yeah. Don't confuse yourself for now. Just understand the terms. Everything will make sense. And then we have um, the anything referring to the pubic bone that is pubic. So anything referring to the sacrum, you know the sacrum, right? The no. part of the vertebral column. Can that you repeat what you just said? The broad part, the lower, lower part of the vertebral column, that broad part, we call that the sacrum, after the lumbar. After okay, the you, lumbar. Need, you mean the part that's close to the appendix? Yes. So it, you have the vertebral column, right? 